So, quite a day at St. James's Park for Newcastle United. A 1 0 win against Manchester United. Kieran Clark very much a part of that. First Premier League start since all the way back in January. Not a bad day to come back. Yeah, um, obviously, personally for me, it was great to be back out there to get the win and, and the clean sheet was obviously brilliant, but it was a fantastic performance from all the lads and I think one a, a result there that we, we deserved. Yeah, yeah. Newcastle started the day second from bottom, mm. but this wasn't a smash and grab in any way. This no. was a pretty dominant team performance. Yeah, I think from the start we, we created the better chances and um, I think we put them under a lot of pressure, you know, going forward. And um, I can't really remember them having too many clear chances themselves. So, uh, yeah, like I said, we're, we're happy with that. And um, you know, especially after the result last week, it was obviously disappointing. And start of the week, everyone was, was pretty down, but we managed to pick ourselves up and we knew that whoever was playing out here today, you know, anyone from the squad that we wanted to give a positive performance and it was a great reaction. How tough is it having such a long spell out of the first team, still been around, been fit by and large, but just not getting that chance, particularly when a new manager comes in and he probably very quickly settles on his own ideas and you don't seem to be a part of it? Yeah, um, it is tough. You know, the manager came in not, with not many weeks to go, you know, in the transfer window and he wanted to try and keep as many players as he could and have a look at everyone and there wasn't a lot of time for him to you know get let players in and or get let players go and then get players in so um i think it was about just trying to stay patient and just work hard in training and and that's all i've done really you know just keep training well and keep working hard and trying to force myself into the team there you commented on it quite a few times <clears throat> unbelievably solid the back three like as Kieran said, like, it's hard to remember too many clear-cut Manchester United chances. No, I think the only one you probably conceded was the Maguire header mm -hmm. um, off the corner. But, you know, you've played long enough with Lascelles and Shar that you should be comfortable enough. Um, I thought you were very good. I thought your whole team was very good. But it's interesting to see the performance difference from Leicester to today. Um, obviously, a lot of people have brought in questions about Steve Bruce. But how have you found... You know, obviously in the last week especially but your time working with him yeah it's been, it's been good since he's, since he's came in um, generally the, the mood's been pretty positive and um, you know I'm not going to say it was positive after the last game because it wasn't um, but we, we picked ourselves up and the man manager picked everyone up again and got everyone working hard and you know we, we knew this week was going to be a, a big game um, you know the idea was to try and you know get at them really and, and get the fans on our side as quick as possible and um, like I said the fans were great all game and I think that showed you know that was that was credit to the lads on the pitch because we managed to get the fans behind us and get them going and um, yeah it was an all round positive performance. I don't know how many times you were on the end of a Steve Bruce bollocking but <laughs> he's been pretty open this week that he <laughs> kind of lost it in the dressing room afterwards he was incensed and I guess when you lose 5-0 against Leicester understandably so. The mood around the squad then after that did you notice when people came back in that they sort of got the rocket up the ass that maybe they needed um yeah well i wasn't there so i don't know <laughs> what went on in the dressing room but um yeah in, in training it was you know like obviously the lads are all down it's it's mm. not nice to be on the end of a, a defeat like that and the mood around the place for the first day or two wasn't the best but it's all about trying to you know pick it up again and um everyone was working hard as, as they, they do all the time and um yeah, it was, that, that's what it was all about, just trying to pick ourselves up again, train well, train hard and try and m move it to one side and, and f focus on this game coming up, which we obviously did. And yeah, it was a great result in the end and obviously buzzing for Matty Longstaff there to get that goal that was on his debut. It was a brilliant strike. Yeah, talk to us about the two Longstaff brothers yeah. marauding things in the middle <clears throat> of midfield against Manchester United. Matty, like, on his debut, to score the winner against Manchester mm -hmm. United, local boy in yeah. front of the Gallowgate end. Bloody hell, that's what dreams are made of. Yeah, um, you know, I'm sure they'll have some proud parents there tonight because that was uh, unbelievable from them both. Um, Matty's been doing, he was brilliant in pre-season. Um, he's obviously coming into it this year and was getting involved training with the first team and all the lads were, you know, thought he was brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, he scored a, scored a goal in pre-season and he's been doing, doing really well ever since. And obviously Sean broke in last season and, and done really well. And, yeah, it's it's obviously brilliant for the fans and for them too to see them playing, you know, in the middle of the pitch together yeah. against Man United. It's I don't think it could have been a better better day for him, uh, for Matty, and yeah, really really proud moment for him. As good as these guys were, the story will be Manchester United and another defeat, nine points from eight games. 
How difficult do you think Ole Gunnar Ole Solskjaer is going to find this when you look at the quality was there? Do you think they have the quality to turn this round, finish top six, contest for top four? Or is that already looking almost past them? No, I don't think they have the quality. Um, I spoke a while ago there on the... You know, they don't have the characters. Um, they have good players, um, but they don't have characters in that changing room. Um, I don't think they'll be able to... You know, a lot, of, a lot of people are pointing fingers at Solskjaer, but I'd be more looking at the players and, you know, the performance they're putting out. Now, I do think Newcastle were fully deserved of the three points, but I don't think, you know, the first half of Man United was very poor, very sloppy. Um, you know, they couldn't, couldn't, you know, keep the ball, couldn't move it well. Now, obviously, we spoke there with, with Kieran about, you know, the reaction from Newcastle from last week's performance. Um, they didn't give Man United much chance, but, you know, I saw a stat a minute ago um, that Harry Maguire had the most touches in uh, the Newcastle box, which was four. Wow. Which, you know, that says a lot for itself. Yeah, as a defender, you're going to be happy with that sort of t- t- statistic. Mm. So there's a couple of weeks now before the next game against Chelsea. There is an international break. Where do you stand at the moment, do you feel, with Ireland and with Mick McCarthy? Um, for me, personally, it was all about trying to, you know, get into the Newcastle yeah. team for a start. I know if I've not been playing games, you know, like, like some of the other lads, if you're not playing games, you're not going to get picked at the end of the day, which is which is fair enough. And um, Has Mick spoken to you about that? Because I think he's expressed that pretty publicly yeah. around most positions that <clears throat> he tends to go with players who are playing week out and week out. Even players like Robbie Brady, have, yeah, again, like yeah. yourself, been very much part of the squad. If you're not mm. playing, it's very difficult to get in, even with all the experience you have. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I spoke to him a while back and, and he mentioned that. And I knew that myself, you know, going into this season, that it was all about trying to, trying to get games and... Um, it's just obviously it's, it's frustrating for me not being able to play because it doesn't give me a chance to then you know go away and, and be involved with Ireland but I know now obviously I've played the game and hopefully I can use this as a chance to really push on and hopefully get some more games and then hopefully be knocking on the door for the squad. It's not as much fun now anyways that your old roommate has gone is it? Uh, well I don't know if I, I'll have to see what it's like if I can get back in but um, yeah. Go on give us, a, give us a story destroy him here while you have the chance. <sighs> I don't really know. I know you, but he's big into his PlayStation, isn't he? You know, yeah, did, you, did he ever stop playing FIFA? Oh. Well, I have some stories. <laughs> he used to, he, we used to have the two beds in the room. He'd be set up playing there, and I'd be set up in the big telly. So we were both playing, so nobody can say I was playing more than anyone. But look, that's part and parcel of being international. You have a lot of downtime. You have a lot of hours to kill. Um, you know, Some lads like to play cards. Some like to gamble on horses. Some like to play the PlayStation. Fabian Schaar is not a bad player, is he? He's already done some damage to us in this campaign. Mm, yeah, he's. Um, I think he showed last season, especially. You know, it was his. I think it was his first season last year, and he, he came in and really stepped up to it. And you know, he's, he's a great, you know, sort of modern centre back or, or right sided defender there, and um, loves to come out with the ball. And yeah, obviously he can score goals, which he's shown. And um, yeah, he's done really well. He's last, like I said, last season and, go, and this season, he's, he's been brilliant. So hopefully he can keep his form, you know, for, for us. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. So put your money where your mouth is. What was his rating out of ten? I'd give him a, no, no, no. I'll be honest because I would tell him straight. Um, <laughs> no, I'd give him an eight out of ten. I would like. I would think in the back five he defended very well, very solid. Um, like like we said, Man United didn't create many chances. Um, just the first half, just in front of the dugout here, in front of us commentating, you did uh, shank one into the crowd. Uh, oh, nearly, oh. Hit, nearly hit us. <laughs> A miler special, as they call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all touch finder. No, but look, you... Wow. No, I think, I think, like I said to you just before we started, well, before we went live, I thought, you know, the back five were very good. Um, you know, Jethro Williams and Yedlin got four when they could, but the 3v defensively, Shar. The cells yourself were very good, and obviously Maximum was, you know, the main threat. Um, you know, maybe you need to teach Almiron how to shoot. Um, but oh. oh well, he's harsh, isn't he? <laughs> he's harsh. This man is going to go places as a pundit. Yeah. No, uh. but I, like I said to him before, I'd say what I'd say to you, I'd yeah. say to him. Yeah. Um, and I thought, no, you did very well. And if you keep putting in performances like that, then there's no reason why he can't be back in the Ireland squad. All right, Kieran, you've been very good with your time. Best of luck with the rest of the Thank season. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers, thanks.